welcome back to engineering simplified this is the part 2 video on the topic forces and torques of a robot in the first part we got to this e equation right here let me just pull it up this one and we found out the three different torque requirement for the three different motors and let's say if i try to combine these three requirements these three motor torques into a matrix form i will get to in a moment as to why i do want to combine them into a matrix form but for now just bear with me so all i have done is i have written the left terms in a vector which is t1 t2 and 3 t3 which are the moments that need to be generated by the motors or the torques that need to be generated by the motors and on the right i have written this xg yg and fg uh, uh, sorry mg where xg and yg are the forces that need to be exerted by the end gripper and mg is the moment that needs to be exerted by the end gripper and once i have written this now all i need to do is i need to fill out this matrix so let me just do it quickly for let's say the third row so for the third row uh, which is T3 I know T3 has zero component of XG so I can just write zero and zero component of YG and for MG it is one so once I multiply zero with XG zero with YG and one with MG I get T3 equals to MG that is just this so in a very sim similar manner I am just going to fill out the rest of these terms in this matrix so I get these terms which is a three cross three matrix. Now, one way that I highly encourage you to think about this notation is to think about how we drive the Jacobian. And if you remember, we wrote something like this. So we wrote X dot equals to Jacobian times theta dot, which just relates the linear velocity and the angular velocity. Or I can say that it relates the joint space with with the angular space and if I manipulate it a little I get this so I just take Jacobian to the other side so it becomes Jacobian inverse so similarly if I keep this in mind I can look at my matrix here in this manner where I can think of the vector on the right to be parallel to the notion of the linear velocity so remember that the linear velocity had a V vector and an omega bundled together in this 3 cross 1 vector and on the left I can think of this torque vector as being parallel to the motion or notion sorry parallel to the notion of theta dot. So why do I want you to think in this manner? The reason is because if I find out the Jacobian of this matrix, it turns out to be this. So we have already figured out the Jacobian of this robot in one of this previous videos. So I just put it up and I just wrote it right here. And now I want you to pause for a second and think how this matrix relates to this matrix right here. Just give it a moment and try to see if you can figure out any similarities between the two. If you did give it a try, you would have seen that these two matrices are just the transpose of each other. So I can say that this matrix on the top is just the Jacobian transpose. Isn't that wonderful? So what is the pra practical application of this? So the practical application of it is I can write the M vector, which is my motor torques to be equal to the Jacobian transpose times this vector which is just the force exerted by the gripper and the moment exerted by the gripper and now you should be seeing how similar this equation is with the equation that we previously drive which was this so you see how similar these two equations are So you just need to keep these two equations in mind and once you get the Jacobian, you can easily get this. So finding the Jacobian 
is all you need to do so you need you can easily skip whatever we did in the last video we went through the derivation of drawing the free body diagrams we can easily skip this if we are able to find the jacobian we can simply write it in this form and we can find out our motor requirements for the robot however one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this vector m which is my motor torques is my motor torque vector because uh, i was dealing with a 3r robot so it had three different motors at each of the revolute joint in the case that say it becomes the 3p robot so it has got all these three prismatic joints so i would no longer have the torques inside this vector but it would be like the force of the actuation for those prismatic joints and similarly let's say if i have a robot which is 2r1p so this m matrix would be would have t1 t2 the two torques for the two revolute joints and f1 which is the force for the prismatic joint if that makes sense i just wanted to put it out here just so that you don't become confused if you come across a robot which is not just a revolute robot so now i have a very small example to just make sure that you really get this concept so i have a robot drawn on the left which is displaced from the fixed uh, frame so it is displaced by uh, four units to the right and two units up and this is where the robot is the attachment point of the robot and it has got two revolute joint and a prismatic joint so this one is the revolute joint this one is the revolute joint and this right here is a prismatic joint so it can extend or it can shrink and this angle is fixed so it is basically a 2r1p robot and now i need to figure out the robot's joint torques and the forces so what you can do is you can go through what we did in the last video and you can draw the free body diagrams and do that approach or the simpler approach would be to first find out the jacobian and then just use the formula that we just derived m equals to jacobian transpose times this which is force of the gripper and the moment of the gripper and we would have the answer so all we need to do is we need to find the jacobian of this robot and just to give you a very quick recap of how to find the jacobian so the way we go about it is we first find out the homogeneous transform that takes the fixed frame all the way to the end frame right here so fixed frame to the end factor frame if i were you what i would do is i would write out the homogeneous transform as a bunch of different homogeneous transforms so h1 would take the fixed frame to this point h2 would take it to this point h3 would take it to this point and h4 would take it to this point so h1 h2 h3 and h4 and then i would what i would have is i would have a big matrix which would just be a 3 cross 3 matrix which would have a cosine term here sine term here a minus sine term here cosine term here and two zeros and it would have an have x y and one here where this x y would be like a lot of terms which would show you the position of the end effector the x y position of the end effector and this would show you the angle of the end effector so what you would do is you would take you would take out these x and y x y and you would take out this angle which i just call theta and what you would do is you would differentiate all of these to get x dot y dot and theta dot and now and once you have x dot y dot and theta dot right so then you would do a what you would do is you would just compare it to this term x dot equals to jacobian times theta dot and using these three equations that you have you are going to formulate this and then grab out the jacobian from here if you don't get it don't worry i have talked about the jacobian in 
a lot of detail in the previous video so go back and check the Jacobian videos it was just meant for a very quick recap of how to get the Jacobian so what I've done is to, so let us assume that I have already done all of these steps and I have figured out the Jacobian so let me just erase all of this to give me some space so let me erase all of this okay so let's say I have done all of it and I have figured out the Jacobian which comes out to be this now in order to find it the the torques of the motor and the force of the prismatic joint what I need to do is I just need to apply this formula m vector equals to Jacobian transpose time this vector f g and m g where again do remember that this vector would be my t1 t2 and f1 since t1 and t2 would represent the motor torques for the two revolute joints and f1 would represent the force that would need to be exerted at the prismatic joint so let me just go forward and I get this where I have just written it out as the Jacobian transpose and I have this so on the left I have the robots joint torques and forces and on the right I have this vector which is the force and movement exerted by the gripper that is all for this video if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you found anything to be confusing don't forget to put your confusion down in the comments below and I will make sure that I get back to you and as always see you in the next video thank you for watching